Welcome back for part 2 of What If Vader Never Found Ahsoka's Lightsabers. Due to the overwhelming support on part 1, here is part 2 as requested. If you haven't seen part 1, I highly recommend you watch that first before watching this video. The link will be in the description below. Leaving the floating Vader in the capable hands of Bail Organa's medical droids, Ahsoka headed off of the ship and into the outer rim, acting on a transmission from a rebel cell. Descending upon the salt pans of the planet of Silos, Ahsoka swooped over the scattering markings of Drupal Worms and towards an isolated ATT walker. Only those who were part of the Clone Wars owned those. Ahsoka salutes Captain Rex and Commanders Gregor and Wolf, but Wolf in particular is reluctant to help Ahsoka. But Ahsoka had an ace up her sleeve. Bringing up a hologram of Anakin practicing lightsaber routines, Rex leapt top of his seat and commands Gregor and Wolf to follow him. Wolf is still hesitant, his trust for the Jedi in pieces. He had been itching to contact the Empire since he had seen Ahsoka. Wolf's hand moves to a transmitter, but Ahsoka saw it first and swiped it away from his grasp. Whilst Rex unleashed his words of fury on Wolf, Ahsoka easily disassembles the walker with the force and into a neat bundle, lifting it into the cargo hold before the clones hopped aboard and made their way together back to the ship of Bail Organa. Once Ahsoka landed, she took them to the medical bay where they were in for a shock. Although Vader's condition had improved, some of his burns were beyond recovery. Now on the operating table, he sat up and met the eyes of the clones. The clones salute Vader, but Vader looks at the floor, wallowing in his guilt and past. This would be a long road to recovery. Another figure walked into the room, this time with Bail Organa. If the clones had been shocked, Bail Organa was stunned into submission. He could hardly believe the once confident Jedi warrior reduced to a pitiable sight. He would need to report this to Obi-Wan. Rushing out of the room to get away from the horrid sight, he scrambled to one of the smaller rooms on the ship and pulled out an emergency holocom, his hands still shaking from the shock. The concerned and weathered face of Obi-Wan appeared, bracing himself for the worst news. Bail cannot bring himself to deliver the news, but is saved the trouble by a shadow in the doorway. Ahsoka stood proudly to tell Obi-Wan that her master was returning back to the light. Obi-Wan is of course sceptical, having witnessed the first hand of destruction his former Padawan had caused. In fact, he had been spending his time on Tatooine dwelling over his failure to stop Anakin turning to the dark side, and looking over his shoulder, he could not risk losing Luke. Ahsoka could sense Obi-Wan's pain emanating from him, and pointing behind her, asks Obi-Wan how Anakin became such a mess. Obi-Wan cuts off the transmission immediately. Whether out of shame or wanting to protect Ahsoka he did not know, but the burden was too great for the once legendary Jedi Master. He tried to convince himself that Vader manipulated Ahsoka to the dark side, but he knew he had to face the truth at some point. On the other side, Ahsoka is not surprised by Obi-Wan ending the call. After all, it was likely to be a sensitive issue, but she couldn't help but detect the overwhelming feeling of guilt from Obi-Wan. He had obviously been involved in whatever accident had taken place. Helping a traumatised Bail Organa to his feet, she escorted him back to his quarters before returning to Vader. Bail was having the same thoughts as Obi-Wan. Although he was not a force sensitive, he refused to believe how the Emperor's weapon of fear could have turned back to the light. He would not let him anywhere near Leia, or let her know of the real identity of her father. Perhaps Ahsoka was still too attached to the person Vader was. Back in the medical bay, the new cybernetics secretly commissioned by Ahsoka made their way to Vader, and they were now being attached to what remained of him. Unlike the procedure with Sidious, this was far less painful, and he found he enjoyed the lack of pain. Sensing Ahsoka to his side, there was a great deal of unease from her, and she knew that she wanted the truth from him. The problem was, he didn't know what the truth was. He had been suspecting for some time that Sidious had lied to him, but if his suspicions were correct, how would he find out what had happened? Squeezing the life out of a nearby syringe, he vowed to retrace his steps before it was too late. Just then, the old suit which laid in a pile in the corner of the room beeped several times. Vader immediately orders Ahsoka to vault the suit off of the ship, where they avoid being tracked down. Ahsoka did as she was told, and broke the suit in as many places as possible with her lightsaber, before force pushing into space. But this lack of communication did not go unnoticed. The Imperial officer at the other end of the call quaked in his boots. To report to Vader had been terrifying enough, but the lack of a response meant a trip to the Emperor. Stealing himself, he asked his subordinates to clear the bridge, and knelt in front of the Emperor. The Emperor's look of evil turned into one of surprise at not seeing his apprentice. Seeing the terrified look on the officer's face, he quickly muttered that Vader was not answering his replies. In a fit of anger, Sidious force choked the poor Imperial into unconsciousness, but knew he had been telling the truth. Sidious coldly thanked the officer, who was grasping his collar and made a move to his ship. He would see to it personally that the matter be resolved. That is it for part 2 of what if Vader never found Ahsoka's lightsaber. If you'd like to see a part 3, please like this video, and if you're new to this channel and my other channel, subscribe for more tips.
And as always, leave a comment on what if you'd like to see next, and how I can improve my videos. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.